Hey, so in this episode of a guy in Devarn uh, putzing on random stuff who sounds like a Muppet, I have an ice fishing trip planned in a couple weeks. And I've got all kinds of stuff. Believe it or not, I have more than this. But I want to somehow get it on the snowmobile itself. So I'm going to build a rack for the back. And I believe I'm going to put a rack across the front for my auger. This is the way I'm kind of leaning. I got this tote that I'm going to put on the back. I got it propped up with the old bar stool. Um, can't make up my mind, like I said, if I want to do some sort of a bucket holder or something like this of this nature. I think that'd be handy, but I don't know if it's totally necessary. I don't know. Now that I see it, I actually kind of like it. The toad is actually quite tall. I think what I said right there just sounded like a Muppet. Man, I don't like that. So I think this is a little on the high side, but it, it's totally reachable. Um, down to the bottom. I don't, I don't know what else to do. I don't want to block the tail light. I don't want to take the time to cut it out and move it. I don't think that's a smart plan. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is take some measurements, make the rack a little bit wider every which direction in the, in the footprint of the toad itself. All right, because I'm glutton for punishment, I'm trying to do something fancy. I want the outside edge being out here to be a rounded corner. Just because, I don't know, don't want to snag your expensive ice gear as you're wandering around with your cold beverage and cold fingers. I don't know. Like I said, just glutton for punishment. So I'm going to try to do that. There's ways to figure this out mathematically, but math in my brain doesn't work all that well. So I measured the point from here and around as best I could with the tape measure. And that's what that distance is. So I cut out what's scribbled out and I'll be able to ideally heat and bend that around to give it a contoured shape and weld it up from there. Hopefully that makes sense. There's probably other people that can explain that way better than I can. So here you're able to get the idea of what I'm going for. I think this will be totally uh, weldable once I, I don't know. There's no reason you need like a four pound maul in order to uh, bend this around. It's just the closest hammer I had. So a little bit of, little bit of grinding, a little bit of uh, tweaking. I think that's gonna be quite nice. So I'll measure, yeah, I gotta figure this out. I got, I want 37 inches wide or thereabouts. Maybe go a little longer. So I'll figure out how, how I gotta do that in order to to uh, get the contour on the other side and make another corner and keep on plugging away. Sorry, there's gonna be lots of time lapses today because it's chilly out and uh, I gotta have the heater running. And that thing is loud, I don't wanna be screaming over it. But you can see what I got going on here. This will be the back end of the sled. This will be the leading edge and I decided to just really mail it in and make that the sharpest point that I can. Uh, actually, I, I don't even know if I would've had enough material to do the rounded doodads on this side because you lose a, about an inch and a half on each corner. but. I think that's gonna look really good. That's what I tell myself. Just don't look real close at the gap on that one. That's gonna use a little extra filler wire, but I'll get this squared up, weld it in, and then we'll you know, put some cross pieces in there out of a smaller gauge, three quarter inch square tubing is what I'm planning to use because that's uh, what I have. So 
So I marked out and cut the intermediate pieces to support it. They're out of three quarters versus the one inch. So I'll just hold them up to the top, tack those in a place, square them up for the other side, and then uh, do a little bit of grinding. And then I'm looking forward to mocking it up on there to uh, see exactly how I want to mount it. Because I actually want to make it, I don't know, decently removable that uh, it doesn't take too terribly long. So wing nuts or thumb screws, something of that nature. So that's kind of what I'm thinking at this point, but uh, we'll see how it goes. This is more, this is the uh, design build part. Later will be the uh, redesign and rebuild and then call it good enough part. See, I told you, I uh, after mocking it up above the tail light, it seems really high and kind of awkward to get it to be braced. I think what we're gonna do is put some square channel across the top of the tunnel here and back out and then have a square piece or two, one on each side that fit into that. So I'll be able to drill a hole, kind of like a basically a trailer hitch. Hmm, actually that's what I should buy is a couple receivers like that. But I think I have a couple pieces of scrap square tubing. This being one of them. This will be the one that goes on the bottom of the tray. And I can slide that in and out. So then when it comes time to trail ride, I'll be able to pull a pin on both sides and pull it out. The only downside that I have right now is that this square tubing fitting into that square tube is a pretty exact fit. And I am not a very exact person. So... I'll have to kind of, I don't know, come up with the best way to get it uh, all uniform so we can get it apart when we need to. And I also got to figure out how I'm going to mount it because underneath here is the cooling fins for the liquid cooled portion of the engine. So I can take out these two bolts for sure and put longer ones in to bolt it through. That might be all I need to do. Um, and I might be able to do a U-bolt or something of that nature off of this pipe around it so that's kind of what i'm thinking well here's the sit rep i can't even remember where i left off so i, I decided to move it down like i said i made a u channel here that this just barely fits into i had to file off the interior seam so this piece is whatever it was nine or ten inches i had to reach all the way in there with a file get that out i did even cut a groove in this one just to make a little bit of a relief cut in it but works good put longer bolts through here that go down through the tunnel that just miss the uh, cooler we'll see if we can get down there so right here these two things these fin things are the the cooler snow goes up there while coolant runs through and cools it off so those are the new bolts there's a rubber boot in between there that connect the two sides so I'm not touching that it's actually it's not touching any different than it was before uh, I got everything just tacked together at the moment but otherwise I got the oh I guess about the only bush league thing that I did is in order to get it sitting level or maybe a little ramped up I needed some spacers and by spacers I mean a bunch of washers so I put a bunch of washers on there welded them stacked them up to how I wanted Put them on there and that seems to actually be working pretty good it's it's pretty sturdy i bought some u-bolts to go around here fortunately they're about a half inch too short so as usual i gotta make another trip to the store um yeah it operates quite well all right so i got everything tacked together i got um clamps on there can you see those instead of the u-bolts that i bought that were too short so everything seems to be operating fairly well slides out slides in i mean it's it's pretty particular which i guess that's okay now i gotta drill some holes and i bought some keeper uh like clevis pins but i do think i have a plan for an auger mount on the front i will see if i can concoct that but i gotta finish welding this do a little bit of grinding because well 
These welds aren't all that good even for a carpenter. So while I got some of the brackets in the paint booth over here, I shifted gears and started working on the front uh, auger rack. Um, sort of a work in progress. I got kind of it's a mirror image from the port and the starboard side, we'll call it. If you can see it, I made a little L bracket. I got the three quarter inch tubing. I sandwiched it on the belly pan. I did have to drill a couple holes. Um, the one inch stock there, I put holes through it, washer and bolt. And I think it'd actually be good enough. These are just finger tight, but they're wiggling a little bit. I'm gonna put, I got one more eight inch piece that I'm gonna put on this, the belly pan kind of traditions into, or, uh, transitions into a flat, flatter spot. So it's gonna go down here. So it'll be welded on here at just a little bit of an angle. And then I think one bolt through this end of it over here into the pan with a, a washer or maybe I'll put some plate stock on the inside coming through the side of the belly pan. And I think that'll work great. And then I just got to figure out how tall I want the auger uh, mount. I'll do some U-channel or something like that on this All side. right, so it's the end of day two of uh, the ice fishing uh, pack mule extravaganza. Got everything painted up. I still got to grind a little bit. I want to paint this top side. For the auger mount, I don't know. I'm always worried about somebody cutting themselves because these blade holders that go on the augers are, I don't know, they're pretty temperamental and rubber band. So I came up with the idea of running strapping around with this little bucket that fits in. So no matter when you set it in there, the blades, I don't know. I'm sure you can still hurt yourself, but I thought it was a good idea. I seamed these pieces. So all that'll stay is this piece up to here. Um, kind of low profile, sir. If you'd use the sled for trail riding or whatnot. Um, I got one bolt through there and the two that I showed you earlier through the top of the, uh, or I guess through the bottom of the uh, belly pan. This side's the same. I just made a yoke out of some three quarter strapping. I'll have to even that up because that's driving me nuts. Yeah, that's all that's left. I gotta tighten up these these bolts, but otherwise, I mean, even finger tight, it's it's fairly strong. So I'm gonna drill a hole through here with a keeper pin. That'll go through the whole unit, attach that, and then and then one on the other side. That way it can be taken off, and then I'll do the same through here. Do that bracket there. So I think all I got left is a little bit of grinding. That may be a little more grinding than I think. Uh, a little more black spray paint and drilling four holes and bolting everything back up for one final time. All right. So as of now, this thing is DU and done. I think maybe for now. I uh, got everything painted up, painted the bucket uh, black so you can hopefully melt some of the snow and the ice off of everything. Uh, I got the keeper pins in everywhere, holding it nice and solid. What else I do? I added some cross pieces underneath here so the straps can go through it and uh, center that up. I bent up some straps for the top of the toad itself. Whoop. Got some of my stuff put in there. Uh, all in all, I'm happy with the project. Sure, I could have. Uh, probably bought one but I don't think honestly to make one for this uh I don't know this vintage or this exact style and plus I just I like to do stuff in my uh you know all the spare time that I have no but yeah does it make the most economical sense probably not but I hone some skills I learned some new things Ooh, learning things uh I need a flat welding table so if you're doing something like this the little u channel that the basically acts as the receiver when i finished welded it sh shrunk or stretched a little bit and uh made it inconvenient or not easy to slide in and out so i had to put a bottle jack in there so that's one thing is i got i learned i got to clamp some stuff better before i completely weld it and uh my osb welding table you know that's flame retardant is not exactly a level surface so that's something that i want to look into making a better table or you know to 
how do I say this, better my craft, better my skills. So it'll make my projects better and easier to accomplish how I want them. All in all, I only have about 30 bucks into this. I got some material that I purchased. I bought the one by material. The rest of it was all scrap that I had around. Oh, and I probably have, I don't know, 15 or 20 bucks in hardware as far as the pins or uh, bolts and nuts. You know, I bought some nylock nuts and things of that nature. I guess I just want to go on record and say that, you know, anybody can do this. I'm a knucklehead. You know, I don't have any formal skills. I don't have any high dollar equipment. I just come up with a plan and usually change the plan and then make things happen and learn from it. So I, like I usually say, I do things even if they're wrong. So get out and do stuff and learn from it and keep on trucking. I guess at this point I'll say thanks for watching.